Hello class, I'm going to do the 2-1 practice exercise here as a guide for you where you can follow along. If you have not watched the linked videos to my YouTube channel that I provided in the week two announcements, uh, the first announcement for week two, I would highly recommend watching those videos because that will make following along with this one, much easier, and two, it's really going to strengthen your understanding of UVs and what they are um, and how to do them. I'll be doing this exercise in Maya. Uh, that's the software that I have taught in for years and the one that I that I use myself professionally. Um, there's nothing wrong with 3ds Max. If you want to use 3ds Max, you're going to be using those tools, um, which I will not be covering in this video. All right, so I have a fresh scene here. I'm going to click on this cube up here under poly modeling. And I'm going to increase the size of it. So in the channel box layer editor where it says scale X, Y, and Z, I'm going to um, click on these. You can either do it one at a time or you can click and drag. And then I'm going to change that to three. And then under where it says inputs, polycube one. I'm going to select these subdivisions here. You can do it one at a time or click and drag, and I'll change that to three. And now we have the same um, you know, subdivisions and geometry that is presented in the practice assignment. Um, I mentioned this in the announcement. I think this practice assignment is not awesome. Um, and what would be better is if you actually follow along or you, know, you review those videos that I linked. Here's the image that I'm going to be using as a guide and they want you to replicate these UVs. Um, <clears throat> specifically, all the corner UVs, essentially these, let me zoom in here. These shells here are not great um, because they're overlapping each other and that is going to cause issues down the road when you get to texturing. Um, you only wanna overlap shells in very specific instances and if you're using a PBR workflow, which all of you should learn when you can, um, and I'll, I'll teach some of that this semester, then you're not going to have stacked UVs most of the time. All right, so I'm going to move this off screen, but before I do, I'm going to start by just capturing, notice that every side of this six-sided cube, right? Every side has a UV shell, looks like a plus sign, right? Or like a first aid sign. Uh, so we're going to do all of those first, and then we'll do the corners, all right? And I'll do my best to um, describe what I'm doing as I do that. But for now, I'm just going to move this to the side uh, on my other monitor. All right, so I'm going to change my workspace from general to UV editing. And now I have the UV editor on the right half of uh, the, the workspace. And let's go ahead and do all of these sides. So, and the way I like to UV unwrap is unwrap and get all of my shells or islands, move them to the side. And then once I have them all, I arrange them all. Um, all right, so I know that I need the shape like this. So what I did there is I went to face mode. You can, and I, you can go to face mode in a couple different ways, but I always use the marking menu for face mode or to get to di different modes. If you hold down the right mouse button, you'll see that this menu pops up, right? And I can get to face mode, edge mode, vertex mode, and object mode. So when you see me shifting modes, that's how I'm doing it, okay? And you don't have to wait for the marking menu to pop up. I know that face mode is straight down. See, it's right there, straight down from wherever I click. So I can just right click and drag down and let go like that, and now I'm in face mode. I know the object mode is up and to the right, right, and edge and vertex. So I can go object mode, edge, vertex, face, right, and I can move very quickly. Um, this is a big time saver. All right, so I'm going to go to face mode. I'm going to select these faces, and I don't want that face. I'm looking at this down here and say, okay, well, this is look, if I want to look at this straight on, it's in the Z axis. So I'm going to do a planar map for this. Okay, and I'm going to hold shift and uh, click on planar right here, and this window pops up. I'm going to select the Z axis, and I'm going to make sure this box that says keep image with height ratio is turned on, and I'll hit apply. And you'll see now I have um, this UV shell, 
Okay. Let's go ahead and do the opposite side. And I'll hit apply. Right. So we have those two sides. Let's go ahead and do this side now. And we'll do these at the same time. <clears throat> so for this one, if I look down here, you'll say, okay, now I need to switch this to the X axis, right? So X and I'll hit apply. And I've captured both of these at the same time. So they are technically stacked on top of each other right here. Um, so if I go to UV shell mode, which same thing, I'm holding right mouse button down, go to UV shell, and I'm going to click once, hit W to go to my move tool and drag this off and you'll see, oh, the other one's right behind it, right? Um, so I'm just going to move these to the side for now. All right, let's do the top and bottom in the same fashion. So um, I'm going to hit um, go to face mode, select these faces and these faces, and we'll do a uh, hold shift, click on planar, and change this to the Y axis and hit apply. And now I can uh, hit W, right, and move these off to the side again. And all of these that I'm left with are the corners, right? So actually this corner is fine the way it is. Uh, this corner is also good because I'm looking at the reference and they're utilizing, whoever made this exercise utilizes this shape, um, which is good. Or it's not good, but it's good that we have them <laughs> here. Um, as I said, this exercise is not great, but we're going to do it anyway. Get practice with this planer. All right, so um, what I can do now, if I'm still in shell mode, right, I can select one of these and it will select it over here in the model. So I can see, oh, okay, well, this is that bottom corner, right? Um, and this is that corner and so on and so forth. And then these faces um, all need to be sewn onto their correct corner. So this next part, I'm going to use the marking menu again and I'll walk you through it. So first I'm going to go to edge mode. So I'm going to right click and hold, go up to edge. Right. And you can see when I hover over an edge, it's highlighting. Um, it'll highlight that edge as well as the edge that is attached to it. Let's use this as an example. So we'll see if I hover over this edge right here, notice that this edge up here is also highlighted. Right. So I can say, oh, those two edges are actually connected um, on the model. They're just not connected in their UVs and we want to connect them. So I'm going to select this edge. And um, you can do this in two different ways. You can either go to this cut and sew and then click on stitch together and see how it brought that one over there. I always use the marking menu for this. This marking menu, instead of just holding the right mouse button down and moving around, um, it's hold, you hold shift first and then hold down the right mouse button. And you have this new menu and I go move and sew edges. So that's how I'm, const I'm going to be doing this. So it's going to be a process of start with um, these uh, shells, the larger ones that have two faces, right? Find, we want to make this sort of L or, you know, like corner shape here. Uh, so find the edge that connects to one of these squares. So I can see that this edge uh, connects here. So I'll select this, hold shift, right click, move and sew edges. And I'm going to do that for each of these. Uh, where, yeah, that's that one. Cool. All right. <clears throat> so now we have all the shells. We need to arrange them in the one-to-one -one space. And if we look at the reference image, uh, let's scroll over here. We can see that, let's start at the top. This is the general, like this is the uh, shape or the arrangement. So we want to arrange these uh, in a similar fashion is what the assignment is calling for. So I'm going to utilize the reference and um, arrange this like so. So I'm going to move this back over here. And first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of these. Let's actually grab, let's see, the, I'm looking at this. And I'm looking at my reference image, the first one. And looks like this. So this shell here, uh, when I when I look at this, 
and I'm looking at this view here with like the Z axis, this shell is located in the top right space of the one-to-one -one space. The one-to-one -one space is this space here. All of our UVs must fit into this space and should not be touching the edges. So I'm going to move this down and I'm going to scale this to roughly the same size that they have it on the reference image. I'm looking at the grid on the reference. So something like this. Now I want all of the shells to be have even textile density and I cover that in the videos that I'm asking you to watch. So I'm, with this shell selected, I'm going to go to transform, scroll down where it says textile density and hit get. A new number will show up here. Then I'll select all of the shells and hit set. And now all the shells have been sized um, the same, right? Correctly. So let's grab all of the shells that we have not arranged properly yet. Um, looks like they have the top shell. If I'm in shell mode, I can also come over here and click and find the shell. So this shell here um, is over here. Like so. <clears throat> and then let's see. Let's look at the next two shells. This is the... I'm looking at the image, the reference image. This looks like this. So this shell is over here, kind of like that. We'll have to finagle this a little. Let's find, let's do all of these first. This is the negative X. This one is over here. It looks like they have their shell scaled down or they might be touching the edges, which you also don't want. So let's scale this down a little bit. Now that I've scaled that down, I need it do the textile density again so i'm going to hit get or whoops i'm going to select these hit get select everything hit set now it should fit properly again usually we do not want shells overlapping all right that looks good <clears throat> And let's find this one, let's see. So it looks like the bottom goes over here. And then we have one more, which will go over here. And because of these shells, again, you really don't wanna be overlapping your shells as they've done here. So I'm not gonna, I'm not worried about you getting these exact. Let's just go ahead and arrange them uh, in the fashion that is similar. So the reason why you don't want to stack these most of the time is anytime you stack a, a shell with another shell, it will share a texture space, right? Like it'll share a texture. And when you're doing baking, um, which you may not know a lot about yet, and that's okay, but it will cause problems, especially in the normal map and the ambient occlusion map. Um, stacking shells can be useful if, um, if you're trying, if you're doing like a mobile game or just doing like a DNS workflow, diffuse normal specular. And let's say you are trying to save UV space and maybe you're making a bridge. See, textile density on this is also not super even. Maybe you're making a bridge um, or something, and it's a plank bridge, and each plank um, you have stacked. Maybe you have three sets of UVs for the planks, and uh, that way you can repeat. So I need to scale these down again so I can get it all to fit. Um, that way you can repeat the... Uh, textures 
and save UV space, uh, or optimize UV space, I should, I should say. So this still needs to be smaller. So I'm going to take everything. If you're scaling everything down at once, you don't need to go through the texel density um, process you, as long as you have every shell selected. All right, so I'm not looking for this to be exact, right? But if you get it looking like this, then you're in a good spot. So let's actually look at the, I'm going to look at the, let's actually look at the specifications for um, how to submit this and we can do it together. So I just checked and there are no clear, there's no clear guidance for how to submit this. Um, and what I would like you to do is, what I would like you to do is I want you to submit the an OBJ of this, all right? So to do that, if you're in Maya, you can select your cube, right? You can go to File, Export Selection. This will come up. And you want to change this from Maya Binary and scroll down until you see OBJ Export. Uh, if you do not have OBJ Export, you can export it as an FBX, but I'd prefer OBJ. Um, if you don't have OBJ, you can go to Windows, Settings Preferences, Plugin Manager. And in here, you're going to want to scroll down. Let's see if we can find it. Yeah. Uh, wait, I thought I said, yeah, right. OBJ export dot MLL. Make sure this is checked where it says loaded and auto load, and then you can hit close and it will show up. So again, I'm going to go to file, uh, export selection, change this to OBJ export, um, save it somewhere where you can find it. You could name it um, two underscore one UV, uh, or let's see, cube UVs, like that. Um, and then maybe uh, your name, first initial, last name. So for me, it'd be C Mendenhall, like this. <clears throat> and then hit export selection, and then you'll upload this OBJ to, uh, to the assignment. All right. If you have questions, feel free to reach out. This doesn't have to be perfect, but it needs to be, it needs to look like the image um, in the assignment, right? All right, thank you.